it is not a fort built to withstand the uh, war yeah. fights it is just Perhaps a temporary it, yeah. you can say transit camp transit camp. transit camp yeah it was a transit because camp because when there is a proper fort then this is not uh, i don't think so this is the standard of their construction it's very if you see uh, shai kila in lahore it's yeah. very beautifully manufactured yeah hello and welcome to yet another video on adilas not cockpit in today's video um we will be going to kila rawat uh, that's uh, that's a fort here in the small town of rawat on the outskirts of rawalpindi and uh, basically this is not not Uh, a fort in the real sense because uh, you must have seen a lot of castles and forts uh, they are they are quite big uh, basically the purpose of the forts and the castles uh, is to protect uh, the cities from the invading armies uh, so this particular fort kila rawat is is not a big one it is uh, it's like a miniature miniature fort uh, tradition goes that it belonged to sultan sarang khan and uh, he was the local uh, ruler of uh, gakhars perhaps and uh, he didn't submit to the invading forces of sher shah suri who were coming in 50 miles from uh, uh, kila rotas which is a real big fort in the real sense of a fort and he didn't submit uh, and uh, then he had to face uh, you know the invading army and uh, as a result he lost now once we go over there i'll show you that uh, uh, the reasons behind uh, his defeat in the battle and uh, he's buried over there he's buried over there with uh, his kids as well so uh, all of his family was uh, basically slaughtered uh, as a result of his non submission So I'll be going over there. I'm waiting for my elder brother to come, and uh, and then we are going to go to Kila Rawat, and we will see that uh, what was the devastation that happened over there, what is the condition of the of the fort right now, uh, what are the uh, plans of the government for the fort, and uh, let's see. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my brother. If, as soon as he comes, then we will proceed. as you can see that my brother is here he is sitting with me uh, he is also passionate about knowing more about uh, this fort rawat and uh, now we are on our way to rawat we are on the chitti road and uh, let's see if uh, it is good enough for my brother as well it makes him happy to to look at uh, the ruins of that fort and i was also anxious to see it because he is spoke Too, too much about it. Yeah. So it made me very anxious about it. So we are moving past Giga Mall. It's right on our left. Raval Pindi has basically uh, developed over uh, a few decades. I still remember in the late 1980s when we used to travel uh, by this GT road. it used to be a very small narrow uh, road and it was uh, for the a very deserted and barren and place. deserted and barren as well and there used to be nothing on either side of the road you know once we crossed uh, ashifa hospital it was like uh, then we were on our own uh, until gujar khan or something uh, there were small towns like veena uh, like uh, rawat and Mandra, even those rawat. yeah and even those small towns have turned big as you can see construction is going on on the extension of the giga mall uh, well that's a bit risky because uh, much of it is on the road he is in right about it now the villages are turned into towns and towns are ultimately turned into cities Both the places are full of buildings. It's a complete, a concrete city now, just like Lahore and Karachi. And you know, let's we are moving towards it, anxious about it. Adil has already seen it, but I I haven't seen it. This is my first time. Let's explore it. Okay. See you when we reach the fort. They have written Masjid Shahi Kila. This is not a Shahi Kila, basically. 
This is not a Shahi Kila, this is basically Ravat Fort. I don't know why this termed it Shahi Kila, but now take the video now. Now, as you can see, the moment I take the turn, this one, there is the fort. There is the fort. Sitting over here quietly without making its presence known. Here is the fort. Yeah. Here we will be parking our vehicle over here. So here is the fort. This is the reconstructed part. This is not uh, general. This is reconstructed. As you can see, these are the genuine stairs. These were the original stairs that were built, but uh, over the time they have eroded. So, this part of the fort, which is the original non restored part with all the original stones as you can see the stones of different types are over here they bear the true story of the devastation that must have occurred over here as you can see all the stones that have eroded over time they tell the story they are telling the story these stones were not like that when they were installed they were pretty much smooth and uh, they fitted well with each other but their erosion is telling us that what must be the span of time that they have been here you see all the erosion you see the different types of stone that are here look over there and then there is a the brickwork then the stones then a different type of porous stone so there must be a story behind this this type of stone and then this one and then the brickwork these are the bricks that we find in the old houses in the old bazaars so even if we look at the bricks, the bricks uh, look to date to at least 17th and 18th century. But this looks uh, a lot older. A lot of it is eroded. This erosion that you can see over there, this erosion tells us that it is extremely, extremely old. However, this part, this looks uh, recent. This looks like it has been restored, but not this part. This is the genuine wall. And the staircase. Uh, you can easily make out where the staircase is uh, starting and where the staircase is actually. And these small rooms. This is where the travelers used to come and they used to live. Uh, they would have their cattle, their horses tied up over here in the courtyard and then they would pay the rent for the room and then they would stay in the room for the night and then they would move on. You see one of uh, the guys sitting on one of the graves. Uh, we, we will check that out that whose grave is this one. Alright. Now, if you walk past here, these are the small rooms. This one is restored. This one is restored. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is not the genuine mortar. 
this one is restored so restored uh, room is not of much interest but this this over here looks genuine again this is restored this thing is restored this is the restored one if you look closely so this is the room where a traveler would come and stay so this is just enough place for one person to lie down on on a bed and have a table on the side and he can look uh, to the courtyard if he has got a horse or something he can have a look out uh, at all the valuables that he has got so all of the rooms they have got no windows but just one entrance and exit same goes over here restored again restored i do not have much interest in the restored part of it but as i have told you that this is uh, a good rectangular room or an inn restored 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 no. all of this is most of it is restored so i do not have much interest in this one but i do have interest in this one uh, look at the formation of the stone over here different types of stone uh all of this at least most of this is porous uh, which shows uh, the erosion being done so this is erosion going on weathering and erosion now this is uh, this creates a lot of interest again you can see different types of stones uh, being put together this is this was the mortar this is not very refined uh, this looks uh, like the job was done in a haste and uh, this is what is binding the two types of stones together you can see the proximity to the city now uh, this this is one narrow street and uh, people are residing uh, all over on the sides look at the arch this is the keystone and this is the arch the genuine arch and from here we can see that uh, this is restored restored new so i i don't have much interest in in the new restored again restored look at the arch oh this is a lot of this is of a lot of interest i think it's restored but again It, if it is restored it should be on the old model this looks
looks good. Must be on the side of the gate. Must be a part of the design. Now these are the restored steps I am taking as I move to the top of the building. You can see the arches from here. So now you can imagine that uh, the city has sprawled uh, on all sides of the fort. Uh, the city is on all sides of the fort now. It is densely populated. It is so densely populated that I can see the rooftops from here. But you can see that this has got no, not much of a defense uh, value, and uh, because we we do not we do not find any. Uh, places where archers can sit and they can they can fire their arrows down as you can see I can see from here but again this is not enough for the archers to fire their arrows no perhaps from here the hot water or something can be you know thrown down This is not enough for the archers. So you can imagine that if the forces were coming in from all sides, uh, the fort's walls uh, are not enough a defense for Sultan Sarang's uh, army. Now this is Jan 1. This looks Jan 1. The model looks Jan 1. There is biological erosion that is going on over here. The plants are eating up the rock. So this is the restored gate. The gate has been restored. So this used to be the gate. And there is one gate line over here. This is the gate. So this is the restored part. This is the restored gate. This has been closed. But as you can see that this is the genuine part of the building which has been sealed and closed. It's not been restored. It looks like it is in the, its original form right now we cannot see inside because there is a green curtain we can't see through it but what i can show you is that it looks to be in its original form so from here and this is not the center of the fort from here i can look at all the inns and this must be the place where the administrator or the person who was in charge of the fort would sit or no this is an interesting part now this part has been converted this is the part that has been converted into a mosque the central part it has been converted into a mosque and uh, 
I won't be taking video of that due to the sensitivities. But now looking at the graves. So all of these are the graves. One of them belonged to Sarang Khan. We, we, we will try to find out which one. But as you can see that the graves are varying in size, which shows that there are graves belonging to some small children as well. A lot of graves. Looks like perhaps there are around 50 of them. I think this is the one that belongs to Sultan Sarang Khan. Yes, this is the one that belongs to Sultan Sarang Khan. Sultan Sarang, Sarang Khan Gakhar, world Malik Tatar Khan Gakhar, and he was martyred on. 1546 so he was the ruler of Atak to Jehlam uh, all of the land between Atak and Jehlam and a part of Kashmir as well so he was the chief of the Gakhar tribe and this is his final resting place so as you can see that the same erosion of the stone there are other small graves as well for example look at this grave must be of a child but over the period of time due to the erosion the stone has cracked so we are talking about uh, six six hundred years so that's enough time for a stone to degenerate and crack so a lot of weathering has occurred here same goes uh, with the other but this looks to be different this looks to be different the stone looks to be different there is mortar so it looks to be older than the other But even on top of this one, there is a lot of erosion. Erosion on this side as well. Let's move to that part. And there are graves over here as well. And grave hair as well. This too, this too. So perhaps there are uh, around a hundred graves, perhaps no less than hundred graves. But this is their chief, resting in peace. You just imagine what the environment would be when the graves were being dug up for all of for all of these people who were martyred in the battle. The environment of the land must be very sorrowful. This is different. It looks dark. But as you can see, this has been turned into a graveyard. Uh, these graves are inside this arch. And there are two graves over here, but we cannot find the rest of it. These must have been special graves. More special than Sultan Sarang Khan as well, because it looks more like a tomb. It must have existed before Sultan Sarang Khan ever was here. His body was ever was here. Even before Sultan Sarang Khan was here. Now, it looks like 
these two graves were special it they were special because because a tomb was built yeah the, this this looks like a tomb so uh, the normal custom used to be that the tombs were reserved or made uh, for the saints only because because if the king if the king is lying in the open and someone has got a tomb it means that this person must be religiously yeah they must be special they must be special and they must be lying over here even before sultan sir before sultan sir khan and and look at the thickness of the wall yeah but i don't know what yeah we we it it must have been brought down by someone intentionally because weathering cannot uh, get these such broad walls down on their own this is the original wall it has been deliberately destroyed it looks like that because uh, such a short structure with such thick walls it, it yeah yeah even even an earthquake won't do such damage to uh, such thick if you look at the mortar that is binding the rocks together these uh, I'll, i'll call them rocks because uh, these are not bricks if the main building is staying with the doom this should have stayed so this has been deliberately done and these were the rooms that i was talking about now will you please come over here you see each one is a precise rectangle a measured one now this it has been restored so i'm not interested in this one this is more like square over there these were the rectangles only 2 to 3 percent can stay in that yeah 2 to 3 but the important, important thing is that anyone who is staying over here can have uh, an access to his cattle his uh, valuables he can keep on looking at them and uh, stay the night over here and then move on uh, towards lahore if one is going or to peshawar let's get up here if the residents are not very sensitive about you know people climbing up okay i am pretty much sure that during the construction of this house the building got damaged and this is a restored part Oh this is a wonderful view of the fort now. Although the main building is now hidden, but this looks like now you can see the first two cubicles they look that they look like as if they are in the original state now. Yeah, these seem to be in the original state. while the rest have been recreated sir question my my query is rather mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all the uh, uh, forts which we visit mm -hmm. in the whole world mm -hmm. they are very thick structure mm -hmm. their walls are very thick yeah but i don't understand at that very era there was no bombs no uh, aircrafts mm. so only spears and swords they cannot destroy cannot do the damage to such a heavy structure there was no need of that yeah, what I, do you yeah. think why they were made so heavy i i think that uh, one such reason could be that the earthquakes have been here uh, even before there were swords and spears but again uh, the structure looks more thicker to withstand an earthquake uh, but i believe that at that time in 1500s and 1600s the cannon had been introduced uh, if uh, we recall tipu sultan 
mm. in his fight uh, cannons were used by him as well so perhaps to protect uh, the fort or the inn whatever we call it from the cannon shots or something but again i'm not so sure but the question is very valid but i can i can tell you one thing if if for example if if you come over here if you look at you, you look at the thickness of this you know the walls uh, you are absolutely right there is no reason for such thick you know uh, walls and stuff like that but 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 the problem is i believe it has to do something with the quality of construction number one the first thing that you notice is if you come inside you will find that it has not been built uh, to a particular quality and standard you will find different types of rocks being you know hurriedly put together this is what i have observed for example hurriedly because of the availability of not a particular whatever. stone at one place yeah no 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 what i am saying is that if this stone is here it means that it is available it it is a local stone uh, we can see it uh, today as well but again a huge quantity but, quantity but again it has been mixed with this one whereas this rock is more you know susceptible to erosion the weathering as we can see this one has eroded more and this one has stayed so i believe it has got to do something with the quality of the workmanship as well it is not a permanent fort it is not a fort built to withstand the uh, war yeah. fights it is just Perhaps a temporary it, yeah. you can say transit camp transit camp. transit camp yeah it was a transit because camp because when there is a proper fort then th this is not uh, i don't think so this is the standard of their construction it's very if you see uh, shai kila in lahore it's yeah. very beautifully manufactured yeah so but I same cannot uh, be said uh, uh, same uh, uh, cannot uh, uh, be said over here uh, yes. especially when we see that the baradari or uh, has fallen down all of it it is much higher i think it is just a temporary project just right? just imagine that you are one of the traveler you have been granted this this cabin to stay the night and your horses and everything that you have brought in from lahore you you are moving all towards peshawar right. yeah and it's there I'm or perhaps your horse is here, here. Uh, so there is a bed over here and then you are looking at it it's such a wonderful evening and you know you you just imagine that and then then your one of your friend is residing on this side well there was a wall there wasn't any window so you the only thing that uh, you could do is you can go over there and was no no door as well about 10000 people sir around uh, no i don't think so yeah not i the, i, I no, think no, not in the two or three covered structure maybe in the open in the open yes in the open yes okay just now what i will be doing is that this is the main gate and i will be walking up there should be stairs over here no there aren't there are over here so now i am moving up the top of the fort fort's main gate again perhaps this one was for the archers one of the reasons why we have these openings is perhaps the archers can fire their arrows and they can themselves be you know protected this is the main road there is the city over there the city of rawalpindi so you can have an all round view and you can fire arrows at the invading army from any of the opening that you like so now we are going to move even further up this is original this is original this is the keystone and it has stood good for hundreds and hundreds of years moving up no oh, this is the real thing this is the real thing now 
Wow. The GT road is over there. And from here, you look at the fort. Let's move even further up. I can hear the fighter jet scream in the rehearsal. This is the top of the fort. And from the top of the fort, this is what you see. Uh, so this brings us to the end of our visit to this fort. It was wonderful and uh, as you can see that we have discussed every aspect of the fort and uh, well it is it was wonderful. It was wonderful looking at this fort and look at the background of it. Uh, we have visited the Rawat fort and uh, we have looked at uh, all the important aspects of the fort. Important thing is that uh, when we are here in the fort, it is such a wonderful feeling to sense what it would be like for a soldier uh, to be sitting over here looking at uh, all the courtyard, uh, looking at the dust from the horses advancing towards the fort with their swords and spears and you know that you are situated in a place which is not uh, good to defend. You're not in an actual fort, Baba. It's, it's a losing battle really. If the battle was ever fought over here in this fort uh, with this castle around, you won't be feeling safe. So it was like fighting to death uh, in this boat. It was summarily, it is a non-defendable fort. I wouldn't even call it a fort. Uh, it, it's not a fort. It looks like a mini fort or something, but again, for uh, a military, you know, post, uh, it's not a good place to be in. Uh, it's a losing battle. It's a losing battle. So that's it. And uh, I hope that you enjoy. Uh, I enjoyed a lot. And uh, let me show you. I don't know. This, this piece of brick was lying around. Perhaps this is a part of the original fort over here. I don't know why it's lying around. One of the important things that uh, tell us about uh, these stairs being genuine is uh, the dip over here. You can see this is the dip over here because uh, most of the times whenever you travel up, uh, this is where your foot will always fall. So this one gets pressed over hundreds of uh, years and you will see this, this bend over here. This is quite a natural bend. This is a very natural bend. So this tells us that this is the original stair. It has not been restored. Look at the erosion. This erosion over here tells us that whenever the water falls, the water falls over here, it comes down over here and this gets smoothened out. Uh, it gets a bit, you know, bumped inside. It smoothens out and then there is this weathering that has been uh, causing this erosion. This is the farewell to the fort. So wonderful fort really, but I believe this is the time to say goodbye. So basically this is the restored part and this is the original part. This one.
This is the original part. was a curve. Yes, it was a good trip. Yeah, and I think I have benefited a lot from the. I came to know that there is some uh, temporary fort over here in this area, which previously I was not knowing about it. So I got to know about the a little bit about life of Saran Khan and uh, rather. Life and death of Sarah. Uh, yes, yes. We have seen, seen the grave, also the construction of that fort. So I don't think so. It's a waste of time. I think it's a knowledgeable. It was a knowledgeable. I, I I guess that there can be a lot of tourism uh, if you know uh, forts like that and places like that are promoted. But well, it it requires a lot of renovation. Yeah. If an area is renovated and it is reconstructed. Especially those places which are broken down, and I think it it has a lot of uh, potential for but the I future. Would, I would, to I would want that uh, in the original way, but there should be more like facilities over there. Uh, there should be tour guides. There should be more facilities and recreational facilities for the families if they decide to come over here. So that's it for today. I don't know it is a part of heritage culture or not. This must be. Must be, must be, must be. So uh, I just dropped off uh, my elder brother, and now I'm heading back home. And I hope that uh, our visit to Rawat Fort was an informative one. And uh, I, this was something I really wished to share with all of the viewers because it was so special, it was so historical, and uh, I'm pretty much sure that most of you must have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you again in some other video. Allah Hafiz.